That, that is something we've customarily done. Is that correct? That's customarily correct. Can I add that? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be in a court. Okay. So the, the problem with, with having a demolition order in the wrong property though is, is we anticipate that this will go to a foreclosure sale and in not that long a time. So if you enter a demolition order, that is going to essentially cause no one to bid. Yeah. I mean, that's going to put like a death knell on the structure. And it's going to totally frustrate the collateral of the bank. The bank has put about 600000 of advancements into the property. So the bank stands to lose quite a bit if you take a structure and turn it into demolished property. So I realize that there's been a delay. Um, the bank doesn't own the property, unfortunately, at this point, but is working on it. Um, We've taken steps to get the whole normal assigned. So we have we have some experts retained to do various work. I think that can be explained. And we're looking for basically to be put on your next calendar to allow us to do this. Uh, the delay is really not the bank's fault. It's the court's fault. And you know, as a lawyer, that's what I've been standing up and telling people now. No, and I, and I get that. Let me ask you a question. Is it in is it Nassau County? Where is it? Where is the court action being held? In Nassau County. Do you have a next court date? Uh, so what's happened is the judgment for the motion for judgment of foreclosure and sale was filed more than a month ago. So it's pending, and it, the judge is reviewing it. It's there. It's an unopposed foreclosure. No defendants have appeared. Uh, it's a vacant property, so there should be some pretty quick attention paid to this motion to get granted. Uh, once that's granted, then you're allowed to schedule your sale within about 30 to 60 days. So we're not talking about hanging onto this property for a long time. But once you enter a demolish order, nobody's going to bid. That's going to become uh, searchable. Anybody doing due diligence on the property is going to see it, and no one will bid on it. So, you're essentially cutting the value of the collateral out. And we ask that you not do that. Well, uh, we're, we're actually looking for, um, <coughs> just put us on your next year. Do it today. If it's 30 right. 60 days, put us on your next year. And let us get in. We have the old harmless. We have people engaged to go in. And let us clean up the exterior of the property. All right, hold on we'll one do second, Council. Look, the, the, I think the, the issue is the um, the fact that it's been like this for multiple years, and, and the motion was filed after uh, this is moving forward. Um, you know, that's it's been filed twice. No, I, I understand that. I understand that, but the, the motion has been like this for a very long time. For a very long time, it's been customarily, you know, we are willing um, to adopt it, and it's still, it still gives time. Uh, but but I, but I will tell you, Council, just in all due respect, um, you know the. Uh, my colleague will speak to this. Uh, this is this isn't a problem that's come up like in the last six months, in the last year. This has been an ongoing problem. Council, Dr. Tom, did you want to add something? Yes, I visited the property with uh, Assemblyman McDonough, and the neighbors were really upset with the property because the kids go there to drink. This is six years, not a month ago, not four months, not a year ago. Six years, the neighbors. I've been asking for something to happen with this. Now all of a sudden we finally get to the point where we can show them we're doing something and they're saying, oh, hold it off for a little longer because we, we did something last month. Uh, we put it in file for a court date. Last month, these were did six years already. You know, I, I have to think of the people that I represent and they're, they're really very, very upset. So, I understand, and, and to be honest, I'm not, I'm and, and if we do pass this, you still have wiggle room as, as the the commissioner said for the building department to resolve it and keep the building you know, intact as long as you uh, meet certain criteria. So you have time. You have a little bit of a wiggle room when you had six years. Now you got a, bit, a lot less time. So well, I'm uh, recommending that we pass this and, and give you that little bit of wiggle room. Well, the foreclosure action was filed until 19. So before COVID, it wasn't pending very long. So, and then COVID kind of closed everything down, as you know. Yeah, no, 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 no,
to do in the Zoom conference, and, and, and I know foreclosure part down in Nassau County uh, well, uh, but, but the courts have been open for, for a while now, and the motions are gone. We, we do have a number of residents who have been complaining about this for a very long time, um, and they live here. Um, you know, we're willing to, 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 to give somewhat of a delay on the actual demolition, but we have to be very, very mindful of the residents who have been dealing with this on a regular basis for a number of years. I'm going, to, I'm going to ask a question. You mentioned three times the whole homeless. Can you explain the whole homeless and what the whole homeless is going to do for us and for the neighbors and for continuing to clean up and stuff? Sure. Uh, again, Todd Javino here. Um, so even though this has been going on for a while, you know, they recently brought me in as local to the property. And this is what my company does. We handle and oversee um, properties going through foreclosure, as well as properties that are presently foreclosed on. And unfortunately, it took to get here today, um, like you said, and look, we're very sympathetic to the neighbors. I live within the community, a part of the town of Hampstead here. And uh, look, we all are sympathetic to it. The reality is, look, I've been out to the property much like you have. And the property, as it states in your report, is structurally not sound. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's actually, if you look at, I don't know if you have the report and survey on page two, it actually says property is intact and in good condition. There are problems with missing siding, you know, bed decks, small grown grass in the backyard, and a garage that should be attended to. But nothing that warrants the property to come down. You know, I don't think we're sending the right message to the community that we're going to take down houses because some kids are drinking beer on the property. Um, look, again, as we're sympathetic, we're here to take action. We just got the whole Thomas report filled out. I was brought into this a week and a half ago. We acted timely. We went out there. We viewed the property. We already had people lined up to move on this. And so, so my question is, what does a whole homeless do? Well, it allows, it allows us inside the property. We, you know, we're not allowed inside the property until we gave the proper documentation and you requested for us to access it. So... Mr. You, you know, when, when were you brought in on this? Approximately a week and a half ago. Okay, so, so a week and a half ago. This has been an ongoing problem for, for six years, um, like I said. And then in all due respect to, to Councilor, and I appreciate you driving down. I hope they, the drive back up to Connecticut is good. You don't get stuck in traffic because they're doing lane work on the 95. The, um, you have to understand the, the board's position. Um, this has been going on for a number of years. The residents have been somewhat you know, patient to a degree. Uh, we're very mindful of them. Um, I appreciate you being you know, retained the last you know, week and a half, but you know, the bank has an obligation. Everybody has an obligation. Um, we've expressed you know, our, our willingness to, to say, you know, we, we can't speak for how we're going to vote, may or may not adopt this motion, and we might, we might delay it, but I do think um, you know, we're, we, we've seen a, a pretty steady pattern of nothing getting done. And, and I'm just, you know, trying to be straightforward with that. Well, look, again, I was at the property, you know, a week and a half ago. The property was locked up, secured. Yeah, okay. Um, do, do, you, do you live in North Belmore? I live in Oceanside. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm sure if this was like this for six years, you... No, I'm sure the book, we understand. I, I, I know, but I'm, I'm saying you, you understand. I said we're... we're You've gotten an expression from my building commissioner, who really does have the mindset that he'd probably go down there and knock it down tomorrow, that maybe he'd uh, be willing to, to, to work with you. Um, but, like I said, is there anything else you want to add to this? No, we just like the opportunity to, one last opportunity to do the right thing here. That's what we ask for today. Okay. Council? Uh, yes. Well, it's just, I, I can't reiterate strongly enough that the order is going to have a very negative impact on the foreclosure. So, you know, you, have, you do have to look at the equities of all parties. This is a bank. Banks can't walk into properties. They've been trying to find this owner for a long time. Haven't been able to. There's no appearing parties in the foreclosure. So there's no reason for me to believe that there's going to be a, a, any kind of long delay at this point. So, I mean, we're not trying to delay you any further. I'm asking for you to just hear us on your next No, no, no yeah. what, what's the bank that owns it? Sorry. Which bank is this? U.S. Uh, bank. U.S. Bank. Okay. Uh, like I said. Association. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, so. I, I, I hear you. And I appreciate it. I got a, another resident that, that asked to speak before we make a motion here. Um, I know it's uh, it's Claire Hanavik. 
Hey, you know, if you go to the back, Mike, give me name and address. That'd be great. Fine, you can name and address. That'd be great. So I'm in favor of knocking down this home. It's been vacant for a long time and I live right next door to it. It is actually more than just drinkers. It's a massive rat problem. It has spread through the whole block. I have killed well over 50 in my own yard and seen many cut off heads of rats and I have pulled squatters out of there with the police. Um, I don't know if anybody else would like to stay living next to a house like that, but that's a big risk. I have a family, and I don't want my house burned down because a squatter needs to create a fire in, the, in this home to stay warm. I stay watch on that house like I have nothing better to do, and I just want to see it on. It is, if you walk onto any part of that property, it is just crumbling. I don't see how it's even sound. I feel like it's a danger, and if those children go into that backyard and go into that shed or garage, it is going to collapse on them. It's a very big risk, and it's very accessible, the whole property. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't have any of the slips on uh, this item. Is anybody else that uh, wishes to be heard that did not sign down on this? Sure, if you just give your name and address in the back, that'd be great. Thank you. Good morning. Marcia D. Thierry, Merrick, New York. I understand if something is dangerous that you don't want it around, but me being a resident of Merrick, I see what happens. You knock the house down, a developer is going to come, and you know what's going to happen because there are no tree preservation laws. They're going to clear cut every single tree. They're going to build as big a house as they can. Ms. Gutierrez, we're not, we're not talking about tree legislation. I'm talking, talking about, about what's I, happening. I, but, but do you have something in relation to this petition? That this house from North Belmore. Do you have something in relation to this hearing? I am asking that if the house has to be built, uh, has to be knocked down, that you do not allow whoever purchases the property to clear cut every single tree like they do on every other property that a developer buys, and that's why we need tree preservation. That's okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, anybody else that did not sign up wishes to be heard? Okay. Um, if not, I please have a motion. I move the public hearing be closed and that the board adopt the item. Second motion. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Carini. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Goosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Mosquerella. Aye. Councilwoman Ryder. Aye. Uh, Council, I appreciate it, Mr. Gubino. Perhaps you can exchange information with the Buildings Commissioner and, and see it. And I appreciate you coming in, but, you know, I. You know, residents uh, have spoken, and I appreciate the councilman's passion as well. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the next item. We have a petition of the Commissioner of Buildings to demolish and remove a two-story wood frame, one-family dwelling with detached two-car garage, and to remove all litter and debris from the property located in Oceanside. Okay, and member of the board wishes to be on this item. I do not have any slips on this item. Anybody not sign in wishes to be on item number three? If not, I please have a motion. I move the public hearing be closed and the board adopt the item. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Karimi. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Kuzby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Oscarelli. Aye. Councilwoman Ryder. Aye. We have a proposed local law regarding regulations and restrictions to limit parking in Garden City South and Oceanside. Okay, you want to board with your this? Do not have any slips on item number four. If anybody wish to be heard on item number four, that did not sign in. If not, may I please have a motion? I move the public hearing be closed and the board adopt the item. I second the motion. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Councilwoman Ryder. Aye. Please We have a proposed local law regarding parking or standing prohibitions in Elmont. Merrick, North Merrick, and Seaford. Member of the Board of Chair. Okay, I do not have any slips. Any member of the public did not sign in, which is item number five. <coughs> now, please have a motion. I move the public hearing be closed and the Board adopt the item. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Mosquerella. Aye. Councilwoman Ryder. Aye. Madam Clerk, please go next time. 
We have a proposal for law regarding arterial stumps in Baldwin, near East Rockaway, Levittown, Oceanside, and Woodman. Any member of the board wish to be heard? I don't have any slips. Anybody not sign in wish to be heard? number six. If not, I please have a motion. I move that the public hearing be closed and the board adopt the item. Second motion. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Perini. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarell. Aye. Councilwoman Ryder. Aye. We have a proposed local law regarding traffic regulations in the vicinity of schools in Oceanside. Okay, I remember the board wish to be heard. I do not have any slips. Any anybody outside here wish to be heard on number seven? If not, please have a motion. I move that the public hearing be closed and the board adopt the item. The second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Bushby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Councilwoman Ryder. Aye. We have a proposed local law regarding bus stops in Merrick. Any member of the board wish to hear this? I don't have any slips. Anybody not signing wish to be heard on item number eight? If not, maybe please have a motion. I move the public hearing be closed and the board adopt the item. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Councilwoman Ryder. Aye. Aye. We have a proposed handicapped parking on public streets in Belrose Terrace, East Meadow, Elmont, Garden City South, and Roosevelt. Any member of the board wish to be heard? I do not have any slips in item number nine. Anybody who does not sign in wish to be heard in item number nine? If not, may I please have a motion? I move the public meeting be closed and would adopt the item. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Queenie. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Councilwoman Ryder. Aye. We have proposed contracts for fire protection services in the North Limburg Fire Protection District. Uh, I go for the board wish to be heard. I do not have any slips. Anybody do not sign in for item number 10 wish to be heard? If not, may I please have a motion. I move that the public hearing be closed and the board adopt the item. May I please get a second? Second Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosley. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Councilwoman Ryder. Aye. Madam Clerk, please go next time. We have a proposed contract for Fire Protection Services in the Northwest Malvern Fire Protection District. Okay. Uh, anybody member of the board? Second. Uh, any slips on this? Anybody been outside having a spear at item number 11? If not, may I please have a motion? Move the public hearing be closed and the board adopt the item. Second motion. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Councilwoman Ryder. Aye. Madam Clerk, please go on time. We have a proposed increase and improvement of the Franklin Square Water District. Okay. Okay. Member of the board, Richard. Okay. I have a slip here, Andrew McFerry. Mr. Yard, Mr. Fred? No, no, we're, we're good. We're going to run questions for the, the board. Okay. Can I sign in? Okay. Anybody else that did uh, <coughs> sign in that we should be heard on item 12? If not, then please have a motion. I move the public meeting be closed and the board adopt the item. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Perini. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Councilwoman Ryder. Aye. Okay, Madam Clerk, please call the administrative calendar. On the administrative calendar, we have items 13 through 49. Okay, uh, any member of the board wish to speak on any of the administrative items? Okay, let's go for Sunday. We'll start off with further uh, perfection. Uh, good morning, Mr. Kachi. If you'd please give your name and address for the record, thank you. Okay, Mr. Kachi, Franklin Square. Item number 29. Um, where are the details of the expenditures for this resolution?
Why wasn't that put in the, as part of the resolution? Um, the description saying how the money's going to be used, that should have been part of the resolution. Put a lot of whereas, but uh, if you need to put like. We have all the documentation, we have the permissibility, we have. Well, I, I have to FOIA that now? No, no one's going to FOIA it, but you did answer your question. Yeah. It's, uh, it should be put, I, I've mentioned this many times, it's state law that, you know, anything you reference here should be put in as part of the resolution so people don't have to ask obvious questions. If you're going to spend $800,000, you should explain to people why you're spending $800,000. You just explain it. Yeah, but how many people are going to come here and ask that question? Lots of people. Part of the resolution. Lots of people come. Yeah, how many people are going to know this? If a reporter looks at it, how are they going to know? They're going to have to watch the meeting in order to find this out. Okay. I just wish in the future you follow up. Well, I've said this to you. Yeah, you know, I'm not a lawyer. Bring that up all the time. I, 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 I actually, I didn't bring up the fact that you know, Laura. No, you I haven't done that. No, no, you, you, in Mr. the past, you have. What? In the past, you brought up the fact that I'm not a lawyer, therefore I can't put. But I think you said numerous times before. On several occasions, you brought that up. Well, well, if you, you say so. Yep. You said a minute ago with numerous occasions, and then you said after I did it last time. It doesn't sound like numerous to me. Anyway. Uh, in the future, please do that. And now, if I can take a data for this, or do I have to foil it, Mr. Mastorian? If, if you're, <laughs> you can foil it if you want to. But can I get it without foiling it? Can you just send it to me or do I have to make a formal foil request? Okay, I'll make a formal request for documentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, I have Pearl Jacobs. Good morning, Ms. Jacobs, if you can give me an address for the record, thank you. Good morning, Pearl Jacobs, you and Neil. Um, item 37, you know, there's some concern, a lot of concern, uh, of course, you know, that this uh, lease transfer was passed last night, so it's going to come to the town, you know, very soon regarding the environmental uh, studies. So my question, um, question is regarding the water quality here in our county, uh, our aquifer, which is our a sole source aquifer um, and its ability to sustain a project of this magnitude. So uh, the last report pertaining to water usage of our aquifer was published in either 2010 or 2015. Um, there was no report thereafter, and we're talking about, what, uh, 10 to 12 years ago? And uh, my question is, when will the town publish an updated report Informing residents of the quality and the amount, the quality of the water of our aquifer, and the amount of usage that remains in our aquifer. Is, is our sole like source aquifer it? here in Nassau County. Is, is that in relation to item number thirty-seven? Yes, it is. It's water. I'm, it's, it's about water. Well, no, you're asking about a report. I mean, it, it, okay, it, no, no, I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm elaborating because I'm concerned about water and our water quality. And here, item thirty-seven, it says. Uh, Related to treatment system design, related, related to upgrades for 1.4 dioxin treatment and nitrate removal goes well field wet. It's water. So, I mean, would I have the courtesy of having someone answer those questions? Well, and, 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 you, you were asking about issue report. I mean, if the, you, depending before you know this is about this resolution, yeah, I know I saw the water commissioner. Can yeah, you explain what this water is? Yeah, elaborate a little bit on the, on the when, no. when the next report will be No, no, we're not, we're not talking about reports. We're talking about the application in front of us. You want to explain what the application is? That'd be great. All right. So the um, residential fire uh, south. You guys tell me where you are. Uh, see, it's so long. I forgot. I didn't do it. It's a nice uh, commissioner. I'm not uh, Tom and Water uh, Supervisor of the Town Board. Um, item 37 is an amending and um, professional services contract with DMV Engineers um, for the um, one foot oxane removal at well 711 and 12 Rizzo Field Water District. Um, the project is now progressing to construction. This includes construction inspection services and other modifications that design are necessary. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, sir, for that update regarding the Roosevelt Field Water District, but uh, I'm sure residents in Nassau County would like to see an updated report on the, on the, uh, on the status of our sole source aquifer here. Supervisor, so uh, in Nassau Department, as all water departments on Nassau County and New York State do, our annual drinking water quality report was just mailed out uh, in the past week or so. If you haven't received it yet, we'll receive it in the next couple of days. 
Uh, that's the annual work quality report. Summarizes all the work quality tests that are done, um, work that we're doing in the uh, district, um, uh, conservation initiatives that we're undertaking. Uh, it goes out every year to every resident. Let, let us know okay, yeah, if you don't get the report. Let yes, us know what's up. Uh, water quality report, but we also need a uh, water quality report regarding our act report, as well as the amount of usage that is left in our aquifer. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I'm going to get a slip to the administrative calendar. Is anybody else that didn't sign a motion to be heard? If not, then please have a motion. Thank you. The
Ready? You're answering Let's questions. Let's reach out to the building commissioner. Perhaps you go to the back and he can help you identify Fred. Uh, is he? Oh, John. Is he? Um, you should go with John. He's really helpful. Uh, you should uh, go to the back and give a helping hand and, and try and identify the property is and who the property owner is. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, next, I have Denise Alexa. <laughs> Denise Alexa, Town of Oyster Bay. Thank you for your time and consideration at the last meeting. We are a group of grassroots Long Island volunteers who presented a deficits report produced by New York Citizens Audit outlining their, their findings of an open source audit of the New York State Water Database. We are requesting your support for a resolution for an audit of the New York State 2022 general election. Whereas it is a recognized civil right in the United States for every citizen to have free and fair elections, and the right of suffrage can be denied by a debasement or devolution of the weight of the citizen's vote just as effectively as by wholly prohibiting the free exercise of the franchise, Reynolds v. Sims, 377, U.S. 533-1964. Whereas it is the affirmative duty of our election officials to comply with all federal and state laws governing administration and procedure of our elections, thereby guaranteeing our elections are accurate and free of distortion or manipulation. Whereas our constitutional system of representative government only works when the work of honest ballots is not diluted by invalid ballots procured by corruption and ensuring accuracy can only be achieved through the operational integrity of our elections as defined by those laws governing the following five processes. Excuse me. One, vigorous ver verification of voter identity. Two, proven ballot security and intact chain of custody. Three, voting systems certified to be secure from operational, physical, and cyber threats. Four, meets all FISMA and state operational and risk assessment requirements. Five, meets auditability and traceability requirements and operational policy. Whereas an open source audit of the New York State 2020 general ele election, excuse me, conducted by New York Citizens Audit has uncovered evidence of massive inaccuracies that violate both federal and state laws, including over 2,400,000 New York State voter ID numbers attached to 1,100,000 over registrants, 740,000 ineligible votes cast statewide, 338,000 more votes cast than voters who voted, 987,000 voters who registered on January 1st from 1900 to 2021, 1.9 million registrations in state voter rolls missing from the county rolls, 625,000 more registrations than voting age citizens in six counties alone, 195,000 votes cast in New York City that went missing in the New York State voter database. 1 million plus felony violations of New York State election law, 95 state and federal legislative races impact by 740,000 ineligible votes, abandoned ballots and ballot payment schemes, certification as defined by law was provably fraudulent and illegal. My colleague will take it. Thank you, Ms. Alexa. I appreciate the information that we shared with the town board. Uh, next, I have Valerie D'Souza. Whereas these findings trample accuracy requirements of voting systems for a federal election, wherein the system shall achieve a target error rate of no more than 1 in 10 million ballot positions. For a voting system, accuracy is defined as the ability of the system to capture, record, store, consolidate, and report the specific selections and absence of selections made by the voter for each ballot position without error. Whereas it must be known factually and provably that the intent of the voters is accurately represented by election results before certification can be lawfully conducted. Certification of an election that varies from the law is an abridgment of the civil rights of the citizens. 
of fraud at initio, United States versus Throckmorton, 98 U.S. 6, um, 61-1878. Whereas state and federal officials have met the efforts of New York Citizens Audit to seek redress for these egregious violations with indifference and inaction, including the Attorney General, Secretary of State, State Board of Elections, Inspector General, Federal Bureau of Investigations, State Leadership of Democrat and Republican Parties, County Election Officials, Sheriffs, District Attorneys, and others. Whereas none of these violations were addressed prior to the administration and certification of the 2022 general election. And there prevails a spirit of extreme content contention and zero trust between people of differing political ideologies across New York, which is destructive to our families, our way of life, and the fabric of these United States. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, next, I have Patrick Quinn. Hey, you have to give your name and address of record, thank you. Uh, good morning, it's Patrick Quinn, um, 7 Osage Lane, Wisconsin. Spent time here. I'm going to pick off where my colleague left off. Um, Therefore, we call upon our representatives, including town board members, county legislators, state legislators, federal legislators, law enforcement, federal and state prosecutors, and judges to provide relief to the people and the assurance of domestic tranquility through the fruity fulfillment of each of the following firm requests. A complete end to end audit of the New York State 2022 general election for both paper and electronic records, including ballots by a mutually agreed upon external third party bonded auditing firm, possessed of adequate insurance and indemnification for the handling and protection of personal identifying information of millions of New York citizens. In order to determine the true error, the audit will provide a comprehensive report and analysis of all lapses and errors with an explanation of cause where it can be determined. Two, the enactment of legislation defining a mutually agreed upon process by which an end to end audit would be triggered by any future elections. Three, the enactment of legislation defining a mutually agreed upon accuracy rate for the New York State voter and county voter roll databases. The enactment, number four, the enactment of legislation allowing for anonymous vote verification and tracking by the voter, open source royalty free patent pending, including automatic mechanisms to report and remedy errors during the canvas period following an election, regardless of ballot entry source. Criminalize election misconduct explicitly with regard to state election law and increase penalties to reflect the societal and generational harms inflicted by these crimes. Be resolved that the town board of Hempstead, New York, stands in support with these concerns and remedies presented here. We implore the Suffolk County Legislature, New York State Legislature, federal legislatures, law enforcement, federal and state prosecutors, judges, and both state and county boards of elections to cooperate and fulfill these firm requests of the people. As Hempstead town, town board members, we are aware that your jurisdictional authority may be limited to a matter strictly regarding the town of Hempstead. However, the support of, of our resolution include not only your constituents, but the, town, but the people of towns throughout the great state of New York. When there are questions concerning the accuracy and verifiability of elections, these must be answered so that we the people are certain we are governed only by our consent. This is why our resolution, our resolution. Thank you, Mr. Queen. We, we have the resolution. We appreciate it. It's been given out to all the board members for, the, for their consideration. Thank, Thank you. you again. Uh, Judy Cataldo? Good morning. Um, Judy 
Tondo, Belmont, New York. Uh, I'd like to read a statement that is an appointment for the South Nassau Water Authority to the Sierra Supervisor, Clayton and Town Council, Long Island Clean Air and Water Soil, rights to recommend the appointment of its director, Dave Denver, to the South Nassau Water Authority. Dave Denver has been the legislative director, of course, to the site for public water. Investor owned Utilities holding a monopoly on public necessity and water charges outrageous rates to secure the records and profits for its shareholders at the expense of the rate payers who are the constituents and not served by a tax free municipal water. Dave's worked with our state officials to establish the South Nelson Water Authority in, in 2022. Dave urged county county representatives to appoint commissioners to SNWA. The ratepayers hope that the commissioner would act in the ratepayers' interest in implement public takeover of liberty. It's been over a year and no public meetings have been held. Two of the commissions are now res uh, resigned. They dutifully um, had, um, they dutifully, two, uh, sorry, the two commissions now reside, one appointed to the town board, the other one's running for county legislator. As commissioners, they dutifully did not think that the town and county did not want to lose the taxes to receive from the Liberty tax payers over the tune of $12 million a year. Taxes of residents with municipal water do not play. Indeed, as course often states, it's unconstitutional for the municipality to tax one resident for water, and it doesn't provide while providing tax-free water service to most of the town residents. With projected 42% rate increases, is that ironic that now everybody's expressing outrage? Our town elected officials are responsible for this outrage continuing. More important than ever, we want to appoint to the SNWA board dedicated to protecting the ratepayers and not unfair town and county tax revenue. This person is Dave. He would ensure public acquisition is completed before the rate hike goes into effect. No one in Long Island has been more knowledgeable about this issue than Dave Denver. Dave's negotiation skills are unparalleled. Nobody will fight higher rather than him. Therefore, on behalf of thousands of constituents, the underserved and overtaxed and private war of the private water monopoly in this town close respectfully request of the town of Hempstead appoint Dave Denver to the SNWA. I thank you so much and I submit this to you. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, Yes, I, I want to say something. Now, on this petition, circling, referring to Dave Denver as a former county legislator. Now, the issue is, nobody mentioned on this petition of why he resigned from the county legislator. Now, the reason why he resigned is, as per Newsday, Den Dave Denver pled guilty to eight felonies for building $2.3 million to apply and served 90 days sentence in federal debt penitentiary. As a former police officer, enforcing the law for over 22 years, I would never appoint a convicted felon to reside in disgrace or office to serve on any board or authority. In addition to that, I hope that Long Island Courts is aware of Town Code Article 2, Section 3820 that bars appointment of any officer of the town board from serving on any board or authority for a convicted of a felony. A town attorney, right? You're interpreting that correctly. You are, in fact, interpreting it correctly. So, due to his criminal background of eight felonies, he is ineligible to serve on the authority. Am I correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilman. I'm, 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 I'm sure any petitions that are online are making reference to Mr. Dennenberg's service, not only to the county legislature, but his service to the federal and the century system and the fact that he stole money from residents, or I should say from his clients, $2.3 million according to Newstead. Um, next, I'm going to call Diane. Next, I'm going to call Diane. Good morning, Ms. Madden, if you can give your name and address for her. Good morning, Diane Madden, Hempstead. Um, Supervisor Clavin, I think that for the first year with the Animal Shelter, you did a remarkable job, and you have done what no other supervisor before you um, had the courage to do. Um, where I see the problem is that I believe you began accepting excuses and not holding people accountable. Um, again, that's my view. Um, and, and my experience. I mean, if I recall correctly, I had to battle some of your own people just to simply get 
the phone lines picked up on the you know, instead of a recorder, and for the public to have disclosed to them whether an animal was rescued or um, adopted. It were simple things, and yet you didn't take excuses then, and that's why those small policies continued. Um, I'm here to speak about the training position that is still empty uh, since January. Um, I urge the board to please make sure that an RFQ and an RFP, uh, another one went up, uh, you did have a candidate with outstanding credentials. Uh, you bypassed that candidate who went through three, three presentations to instead hire someone that ended up threatening the public and being fired um, for falsifying certification. So I think that that should be a priority at the animal shelter right now. The staff, um, whether you're being told this or not, is once again very discouraged. Uh, the shelter has a feeling of going backwards. I know you don't want to see that happen. I certainly don't want to see that happen. Um, in 2011, they had actually a titled position for the behavior position. Um, it had requirements, it had standards, and the shelter, because of that, went on the right track and stayed there for a number of years. In 2016, they reduced it. They no longer required a testing position, which was a mistake. They just put out an RFQ and an RFP, and they did advertise. Um, to date, 2023 now, apparently, according to the town communications, there are absolutely no requirements for the job, and in fact, it's been empty. Um, again, I don't think it's asking for too much. It's been going on since January to once again advertise the position properly um, and to pick from the top, not from the bottom. And bring in people that are going to review those resumes and not just pass them through. Um, it is very important to have a positive reinforcement um, trainer and it is very important to have them carefully screened. Um, it's a public safety issue. It's an issue of staff training. You have dogs that are brought in from pit bull rings. It's important, essential, to have the staff properly trained. They are not trained. Um, Supervisor Clavin, if, if you have no interest in doing this or taking further steps, then I ask you to privatize the animal shelter. Um, I acknowledge what you've done. No, this man, I appreciate you know the rules, and I appreciate, and I appreciate the advocacy. If you want to also point out for the line speaker that I've been uh, secure, tell that there's currently an RFP for an animal behavior consultant. It's running townwide in the Heralds, and in Long, this is news, and apparently the state reporter as well. Um, we appreciate it, and uh, I appreciate uh, all your, your comments as always. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see it on the website. And I'll, I'll have somebody, you know, Dominic will be nice enough to present in the back, just so you know. Yeah, Next, I have Nadia Clark. Stand up there, identify yourself there. 
you can set up a meeting with them right after, after this. If you guys want to sit down and talk about what your concept is. All right, Ian, no problem. Thank you. Next item, Linda Howe. I'm Andrea Martone from Merrick. Hi everyone, I'm speaking on behalf of Wild Ones of Long Island. We met with your staff in October of last year about our shared interest in tree preservation. And at their request, we put together a proposed tree ordinance which we delivered to you on March 13th. Mr. Clayman, did you receive that? Ms. Martone, I'll send it to you. In collecting information for our proposed tree ordinance, we learned that every town on Long Island and other municipalities across the country have stricter ordinances than the largest township in the U.S., the town of Hempstead. The current ordinance requires a $25 fee to take down a tree in the public right-of-way and a $25 fine if you fail to apply for this permit. There are no restrictions for moving trees on, removing trees on private property. So this does not deter anyone from removing a tree. Just to give you an idea of the magnitude of loss we've suffered in the last three years, I have counted over 100 canopy trees taken down in a five block radius. These trees are irreplaceable, and what is being planted instead are non-native alien species of shrubs and trees. I was shocked to learn how detrimental this is through some of my reading with Doug Tallamy's book, Nature's Best Hope. With regard to your concerns of limiting property owners' rights, the town already limits property owners' rights in many ways. Without a permit, a homeowner cannot expand a dwelling, put in a pool, or rent their home. Homeowners must have respect for their environment, such as how we cannot just dump toxic waste into the ground because it will affect the larger surrounding environment. Taking down a single tree may sound insignificant, but there is a whole world of fungi, insects and birds that need that tree to survive. The tree also supports one of the trees that support one another underground, sending nutrients to each other. One oak tree can host up to 150 different species from its roots all the way up to its acorns. An oak tree is considered a keystone species in our region. Can you guess how many different species a non-native tree, like a crape myrtle, a beautiful flowering tree hosts? Zero. Just to be clear, we aren't proposing an ordinance that would take away property owners' rights. We want to be, they will be able to take down a native canopy tree if they want, but after following a process. Yes, it would make it more difficult for them, but they would think twice about why they're taking down the tree and how it affects the larger community. Also, you might like this, it will provide an opportunity for the town to generate revenue. We're proposing that the homeowner be required to replant a native tree on their property or to pay into a tree fund to replant somewhere else in the township. I believe you're all aware of the town of North Hempstead's new tree ordinance. Cornell Cooperative Extension is more than happy to meet with you to write this legislation, and you can even become an Arbor Day Tree City USA once again. Thank you, Dr. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks to Pearl Jacobs. Good morning, Ms. Jacobs. Can you give me your name and address for the record? Thank you. Good morning, Pope Jacobs from India. Um, first, I'm going to start off by, you know, saying uh, again on this uh, proposed project at the Nassau Hub, the town of Hempstead will be responsible for all environmental testing related to this proposed Sands Casino project. And I just want to share some facts, but I know you already know. I just wanted to reiterate the facts that Unidale, Roosevelt, Hempstead, and Westbury have been identified by the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation as communities that are adversely affected by air pollution, among other concerning environmental issues. African American and Hispanic youth have a significantly higher rate of asthma hospitalizations in Nassau County than that of our Caucasian and Asian youth. Traffic would increase significantly with a casino at the Nassau Hub. Increased traffic results in higher levels of air pollution, more cases that attribute to asthma. And Hempstead Turnpike ranks in the top five of the most dangerous roadways in New York State. And we already spoke about our water quality. So I'm sure that you would do these environmental studies and these uh, testing in a fair and professional and transparent manner. Thank you. 
Um, also, I have um, pictures from Unidale Avenue uh, on Saturday. Our committee, No Responsive Association Beautification Committee, will plant with flowers 7 o'clock on Saturday morning. Um, you know, in the planters uh, that stretch up and down Unidale Avenue. The litter was appalling. Okay, appalling. I have pictures. I show you the respect to bring you and show you the pictures. I started to put on my Facebook page and send it viral, but I will share this with you. Um, I know before you had pickers out here taking I understand it's a, it's a, a county road, but you know I am tired of doing this job here and then going to my county and then going to uh, my senator. So I'm leaving it here so you can escalate this for me. Um, my representative. And um, like I said, this, this is ridiculous. But also, I would like to thank John Lipinski, Todd Trotrano, and his team for the wonderful job that they do and the, and the access that they provide you know, to help Union Deal and our quality of life issues. I would like to also thank uh, Pete Caparelli and Frank, uh, Frank Pepe for their support and their hard work that they do to uh, keep up the quality of life in Unida. And another issue, signage, visual, visual pollution, 576 Unida Avenue, that lot remains oh locked off. Um, locked off, there's no activity going there. But um, we would like the visual pollution, the signage removed from that okay. locked off lot. Let me ask you a question, just a Who's your county legislator there? Thank you. Fine enough. Well, you know, you should know that. I'm not even asking. No, that. Not, I'm just, um, my you council know, person should no, know. No, no, no. I'm just asking. Who's the county legislator so I can reach out to them? Oh, oh, you reach out to them. That would be great. That would either be Kevon Abrahams or Celia Bino, you know, because of the redistricting. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so when you reached out, to, who did you reach out to recently about this? I reached out before, like several times before. I did not bring this to them as yet. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Then, then, then what else? Was, I'll give them. A, give them a call. Not a problem. Okay. okay. I really appreciate. Marsha D. Pierre. Twenty-four gallons of water to the pound of plastic. Marsha Dutier, Merrick, New York. This is good because if you're serious going I'm requesting once again that tree preservation put it be put into place. I'm also requesting, as with the town of North Hempstead, that there be a public meeting separate from the monthly board meetings to hear what the constituents of this township want, not the minority of the board members. Don't we deserve a healthy environment as with other local townships? Emails of other townships laws were forwarded to you for review to all the board members. I hope you saw it. If the majority feels that your constituents deserve better, please consider the help in the future of the town of Hempstead. Supervisor Clayton, uh, Garden City, Article S188-9, since it has been established that trees stabilize the soil and control water pollution by preventing soil erosion and flooding, absorb air pollution, provide us with oxygen yield, advantageous microclimatic Effects have an intricate aesthetic quality, protect and increase property values, offer a natural barrier for noise, and provide a natural habitat for the wildlife. And that the removal of trees deprive us of these benefits and disrupt fundamental ecological systems in which they are intricately in involved. It is therefore the purpose of this article to prevent the indiscriminate destruction or removal of trees within the boundaries of the village of Park City and to provide for the relocation or replacement of trees which may be destroyed or removed. Town of Hempstead, Andrea Red, Town of Oyster Bay, in an effort to remove as few trees as possible, only trees that are considered hazardous, dead, or diseased, or severely damaged will be re removed. Trees that may adversely impact impact proposed home improvements on the applicant's property will also be considered. A tree inspector from the town of Oyster Bay will assess the condition of the tree before any tree is removed and will file a report. Town of Brookhaven. The vital environmental functions which trees serve within the ecological structure of the town of Brookhaven is well recognized. 
Trees are recognized to provide various benefits to the environment, including the stabilization and preservation of the soil, the absorption of air pollutants, and the provision of oxygen, and to further provide natural barriers to noise and habitats for wildlife while maintaining and offering, offering intrinsic aesthetic quality. Destruction and removal of trees deprives all sectors of society of these benefits while disrupting the ecological systems for which they are an intrinsic integral part. Thus, it is the intent of the town board of the town of Brookhaven in enacting this chapter to regulate the destruction and removal of trees and to secure these various benefits for the future. Thank you, Mr. Tier. Next, I have uh, Sandra Hall. Uh, good morning, if you could name an address for the record. Good thank morning, Sandra Hall, Uniondale, uh, good morning board. I'd like to mention a good morning uh, fellow uh, Nassau County residents. Uh, I want to talk to you about 159 Gilroy Avenue. Uh, it's a squatter's house. There's a squatter's problem going on in Uniondale, along with drug and rehab programs for alcoholics and people transitioning into not getting high. Well, we have more homes in Uniondale for those types of individuals than in the rest of uh, the county, and it's a huge problem. 159 Giveaway Avenue, we get old, we're alone because the kids don't care about you. So what happens is you're alone in your house, you die, and when you die, squatters move in your house. And that's what happened at 159 Giveaway Avenue. So they're selling wheat, the grass is about 30 feet high, and people are looking at me, Miss Uniondale, what are you going to do about this? Because it happens to be across the street from my house. The next thing I want to talk about is food trucks. Now, we know that Nassau County is readily and steadily turning into Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn. There's rooms to have a food truck. I'd like to have a soul food, food food truck. I'm working on that. But you're supposed to move every 15 minutes, and you need to be licensed. You just can't build a truck out of a van that you created. That's what's happening in Uniondale in Jerusalem and Uniondale Avenue. The next thing is the illegal basement apartments. Our lovely governor would like to see Uniondale and Nassau County turn into more of a city environment. No, the roads aren't built for that. The electricity isn't built for that. We're, it's just not built for that. It was built for one family, and you have a thousand people living in one home. Cars, uh, uh, Ms. Pearl Jacobs is correct. Uh, Uniondale has a lot of kids with asthma due to carcinogens, nitrogen. The, and we have the uh, businesses that have are fixing cars. We need dog notices to go out to the residents to clean up your dog mess, cut your grass, because we have slum lords. Uh, most people that own their houses keep them up, but it's a huge problem, and that creates uh, all of the bugs and things that hurt us uh, in the summertime. No parking zones. There's no parking signs not halfway down in Uniondale everywhere. There's a sense of recklessness and lawlessness. We, we owe the police a refund, not a defund, because who else are we going to call? We need their help. We need new signs put in that you can't park on a corner with your commercial vehicle so the buses and the uh, sanitation trucks can't get by. Children can't safely uh, abort and get off of the, the buses. The Nassau County Strip Mall on Nassau Road. There's a strip mall by Family Dollar that's turned into uh, you know, brothers hanging out and people can't keep a business there. It's trash, it's dirty. Please look into that. And I also want to say at 312 Uniondale Avenue, there's a, a, a Dominican shop there that has speakers that they sell for cars and they entertain us every day. Every day we listen to this music and it's loud enough to hear in Wyoming. So we need help with that. 312 Uniondale Avenue. And last but not least, no casino. Ms. Hall, Ms. Hall, Ms. Hall, Jay Fair, Great, Jeff, uh, Fred. No, Fred's in it. That, that's my building commissioner. I just want to get those addresses uh, with you and also to follow up on getting the, uh, that, the, your idea of the sign in the corner. And, and I believe Consumer Affairs for Nassau County is responsible for the food trucks uh, and the health department. So maybe we'll, we'll reach out to the, the county and ask them to do some enforcement. But I'm just going to actually follow up with him if, you, if it's okay. I just want to get those out. I'm a school him. teacher by day. I took off to come here. We, we appreciate it. Like I said, he's he's a commissioner. He's going to get the answer 159 and 312. But I took some notes, but I want to make sure the streets oh, are yeah. done right. Now, I don't have any other slips of anybody else who has not spoken to wishes to be heard, did not sign in. If not, uh, have a wonderful evening. Uh, and afternoon. Take care. Bye-bye.